Let's face it guys, building your own clientele in any type of business is absolutely petrifying. Now today, I wanna give you guys an insight into how I have built up a clientele over time and how that process has moved from being something exhausting and terrifying into something that is really nice and extremely sustainable. Time to think like an investor. Hello and welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Josh. I am a sixth year certified financial planner and I run my own wealth management business. Now, although I'm a financial advisor myself, I think these principles really apply to anybody who is trying to build up a clientele in anything. Whether you're selling cars or you're a hairstylist or you're an accountant or whatever it might be, if your outcome of your life or your lifestyle, financially speaking, is dependent on you building a clientele or the inputs you make from a sales capacity, let's say, I think these principles apply. So whether you're a financial advisor or not, I think you can get some value out of this video. And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, this video is for me, well then hit that subscribe button below. It's completely free and you'll get more content like this. But I gotta start by telling you guys a story. See, when I first got into this business, I was working for a larger company and I get called into my manager's office on one of the very first weeks I'm working there. And he says, all right, sit down. And so we uh, sit down in his office and he says, all right, open up your phone contacts. And I'm like, okay, so I open them up. And he says, let's start calling them and let's try to get some clients in the door for you to sell something to. And for me, as someone who was kind of always nervous talking on the phone and didn't really like putting myself out there, this was petrifying. And you're probably going through something like this if you're building a business of your own or if you're thinking about it. In the back of your mind, you're wondering, can I really do this? Like when push comes to shove, can I go out and get it? Can I make business happen? Can I be persuasive? Can I sell? Is anyone gonna buy what I want? And you have all these doubts. And that's exactly where I was in the winter of 2016 when this all began. And so while my tenured manager, who's a veteran, is like the judgment of God himself is overlooking me, I start making these calls and stumbling over my lips and my face is going red and I can't really get any words out and people are saying no or why are you calling me? It wasn't very good. And so everybody who needs to build their own clientele is going to go through this at the start. It's just part of the process of feeling like an idiot at first. To me, this idea of just randomly messaging people, randomly walking up to people, trying to stir the pot, trying to get meetings, trying to build connections, trying to go to networking events, trying to call people, messaging people, all these things. This is what I call like guerrilla warfare marketing and sales. It's like, we are going to just run into the front lines and stir the pot and see what kind of happens. And obviously that sounds terrifying, right? Nobody really wants to do that, at least I don't. Maybe there's like 1% of people who are just natural door-to-door -door salespeople and wanna go out and do that. It wasn't for me. And the good news for you is that today I've got a business that's great and I love it and it's succeeding, I would say. So if you don't like it either, don't worry, there is hope for you. You don't have to be in that 1% to succeed. But how do you succeed if that's really not your style? Well, I can tell you a little bit about my experience for me, over time, I had to start in that guerrilla warfare marketing just like everybody else, but over time it developed into something more sustainable and really enjoyable, something more akin to like the growth of a tree. It's like you plant a seed, and then you have to really take care of that seed and nurture it. You have to like water it and then there's sunlight and you know, there's this whole mythology about giving it love, which means giving it a tent and making sure you're paying your daily dues to keep that seed alive. And then over time it starts to sprout a little bit and you have some hope and so maybe you keep, you know, watering that tree and keeping it alive. And over time it starts to grow and grow and grow. And after two or three years, this thing's actually bearing fruit. And not only is it bearing fruit that you can live on and eat now, that fruit is producing seeds that you can replant. That's the key, right? Given enough time and planting enough seeds, the benefit you can reap multiplies and multiplies and multiplies exponentially to the point where there's just fruit growing all around you and now you can actually pick the fruit that you wanna eat. And so today I wanna walk you through where my first three or four clients came from and where my most recent three or four clients came from. And I wanna show you the difference between what it's like to be starting out in a service-based business, like financial advisor building up your book, and what it's like six years in, and how those differ, and what you really have to look forward to if you can survive. Now, believe it or not, my first three or four clients in my business all came from that first meeting where I sat on the phone with my manager across from me, stumbling over my words, and I was able to book a few meetings. And of the ones that got in front of me, I actually did a pretty decent job and I was able to be myself a little bit. And, and over time they decided, yeah, I wanna start working with Josh and great, love that. But now here's the point, okay? Here's my main thesis behind this video. In any business like mine, like wealth management, financial advisor, or service-based business, you have to go through that original desperation stage to survive but you do not wanna stay there. Your goal is to get to a point where you have not only survived, 
but planted enough seeds to start growing trees. And so what do I mean by growing trees? I think there's so many different ways you can plant seeds. Some of the best ones, the highest leverage ones, are doing a really good job for the existing gorilla desperation clients you got. And the reason that's a seed is because you will get one client. And if you do a very good job for that client, you are planting a seed. And two years later, you get referred to their sister or you get referred to their parents or their cousin or their coworker. Okay, so that's planting seeds. Doing a really good job for a client is a seed planted. Creating online content, that is planting a seed. You're effectively putting a little piece of digital real estate out there that people can stumble across. And once they see four or five or six pieces of your content over a long period of time, maybe a couple of years, eventually they're gonna have a need that you could solve. And you're gonna be the person that comes to their mind. Creating content, marketing, these are planting seeds. You see, the big problem is a lot of people think, oh, I'm gonna knock on doors, I'm gonna cold call, I'm gonna do some digital content, and they stick with it for two months or three months or four months, and then it putters out because they don't see any results. But what I believe you're trying to do as someone building a business where you're serving clients is you are just trying to survive long enough for the trees to start bearing fruit. So what that means is you have to be doing both of these at once. You not only have to be planting seeds, digital content, doing a great job for clients, referrals, these sorts of strategies that create a much better future but don't produce anything right now, that must be balanced with survival because you can't just be planting trees, planting trees, planting trees with nothing to eat and then you don't live or survive long enough in the business to see the fruits of all those seeds start to actually sprout. So that is the psychology. That I believe is the best way to think about this. Survive until the trees are growing fruit and then you arrive at a place where I feel like I'm at today. And now I wanna walk you through where my four most recent clients came from. And you'll see how this kind of ties into the tree idea. So I'm gonna use code names obviously to you know, maintain the anonymity of these clients. They probably don't want their name and financial details out there. Um, but I'll give you the general profile. So first one uh, we'll call Rebecca. And Rebecca is a law student who has done an incredible job of saving over the course of her life and at this point has just kind of accumulated like $100,000 in her bank account. And so she came to me thinking, oh my goodness, like inflation's getting very high. I know I should probably be investing, but a lot of this stuff is just with the bank branch. I'd rather have somebody who is going to put more care into this, do a little bit of tax planning because here's the thing, when you have enough money that your registered accounts are maxed out, now you gotta get strategic with taxes because some of your investments are being taxed along the way. So she came to me for help with that. Now, $100,000 with a young law student, that means good client now, high potential. She's amazing to work with. I absolutely love chatting with her. And so for me to get a client that I enjoy this much and provides this good of an opportunity, where did that come from? Did it come from cold calling? Did it come from randomly DMing people? No, it was actually a referral from another young client who I just got like a month before. So I did a really good job doing a proposal and set up for one client and immediately she referred her sister and her sister is now Rebecca, this person I'm talking about. And so the funny thing is the original client came from watching these YouTube videos. So this is what I mean by planting seeds. Digital content, someone watches three or four videos, they actually reach out to me to do business, I do a great job for them and now they've seen, okay, social proof with YouTube, Okay, now he's actually done a good job for me. I'm gonna refer my sister and this girl, Rebecca, that we got, the sister of the original client, is stellar, incredible. And what did I do? Did I have to go out of my way to knock on a door and expose myself to rejection? No, my, an email came into my inbox saying, hey, you did a great job for my sister. I'd love to work with you as well. And it was that easy. See, much more sustainable, much less stress. Next client, okay, here's a funny one. He, this client, Oliver, knew him since high school. He was a few years younger than me in high school. And over time, it was very obvious that he was becoming a pretty ambitious person. And so we connected through the years. He was friends with my family and all sorts of things, but kind of distant. Um, and over time, he actually found himself in a role that was um, at a startup that was growing very quickly. And so he is in a position now where the amount of money he is generating within this business is so much so that it rewards him starting a corporation and a holding company to separate out his assets and make sure that for all the money that he is not spending, he's not being taxed on it, right? If you accumulate money in a corporation, you only pay tax on it when you take it out personally. So he was looking to me to be like, okay, Josh, I need your help with getting a corporate investment account set up and finding out the tax implications of that so we can grow this money that I'm not withdrawing to spend. And so, so he's an incredible client with very high potential, going to be adding money hand over fist every month. And the great thing about this is he just came to me because I work 
with someone that he works with and he knew me from high school. So you see how over time you get these triads, right? Where they know you in multiple different ways. And the second there's a prospect that knows you from multiple different ways, maybe they've read one of your blog posts, plus they knew you from high school, plus you work with one of their coworkers, you have this triad of, wait a second, there's social proof from so many different angles. I trust this guy. There's so much hinging on him doing a good job. And so extremely easy client to get, absolutely love this client. And so like you can see, much easier. Didn't have to go out of my way to make that happen. It came to me. Now, the next client is Michelle. Okay, so Michelle is another person similar to Rebecca. And she had just done a fantastic job of saving. She was almost afraid of spending money. A young girl, a few years younger than me again, actually. And so she has also accumulated about $150,000 that was literally sitting in a checking account. And so for us, $150,000 is a great client. We are more than happy to have that. Now for her, the main thing was she really wanted to start investing, but she was afraid of downside risk. And so there was a lot of things going, right? She had enough money that she was gonna max out all her registered accounts. There needed to be some tax strategy done. She also knew that she wanted to invest in a way where she wasn't exposing herself to massive volatility, but could still get you know good investment-like returns. And so we're helping her through that, building out a proposal, building a plan, getting an investment portfolio in place. That's all done. And that all came through Instagram. Um, she knew some mutual friends. She had seen some of my content. We were both interested in golf. And over time, it just kind of so happened that uh, she reached out, she became a client and um, very grateful for it. So like you can see, just fruit from seeds you planted a long time ago starting to fall into your lap. And the last one, which is really exciting is, let's call him Clyde. Now Clyde used to coach a volleyball team that I volunteered to coach, but we were coaching different age ranges. And so we would overlap every now and then. And then he also knew me through the fact that I was a volleyball athlete in high school. And he knew me through the fact that I had been producing a lot of financial content because he's in the insurance industry. So over time, he came across more and more of my videos, kind of got interested in my philosophy. We got together for a Zoom call a couple months back. Nothing really transpired, but again, he just recently slid back in to my emails and said, hey, I've got about a million bucks that's accumulated on the sidelines. I'm not really willing to invest all of it, but it's been a really good year in business. And I'm hoping to maybe find a way with you how we can beat inflation with this money without exposing it to too much downside, given that markets are elevated. And so him and I are gonna walk through a proposal and a strategy to get probably half a million to three quarters of a million dollars invested. So between each of these four clients, that's about a million bucks in new assets from really young people who are high growth, high potential. You know, that's being selective. That's just great fruit, like ripe, beautiful, voluptuous fruit that I can now pick. And none of those things required me to knock on a door or face rejection. All of that rejection you face is in those first few years trying to survive while you're planting seeds to find yourself in a situation like this. So hopefully this idea makes sense to you guys. The reality is the reason those first couple years are so hard is because you have to survive while your seeds are growing. And the survival while the seeds are growing, it means you're gonna have to knock on doors, cold calls, send emails, start messaging people, trying to stir up any business you can. Now, I'd like to leave you with one last little snippet of wisdom, if I may. Whether you're in that guerrilla desperation marketing prospecting stage where you're trying to survive or you're starting to see some of those seeds bear fruit, in either case, there's something really weird that is going on. Now, this is something I just can't explain with science or with math. It's in the realm of like mythology and spirituality, things that you feel are real, but you cannot prove in the physical world. I think there's a lot of things to be said about this, but what I find, I kid you not, if I decide to sit back and say, hey, I've worked really hard, I'm gonna take a rest, I'm gonna make sure the trains are running on time, but I'm really not gonna like focus on growing my business. I'm just gonna relax for a bit. What happens is the pipeline dries up and the inbound leads start to stop. But once you create an intent to say, I'm gonna say yes to every opportunity that comes my way. I'm gonna take every coffee meeting that's requested of me. I'm gonna respond to every comment and respond to every DM. I am going to start stirring up action. What you find is that within days, things start falling in your lap. And this is something I can't explain. I don't know how it's metaphysical, it's surreal, it's spiritual, I can't really tell you. But the old religions and mythologies of the world talk about having faith. And I think this business has shown me over and over again that you have to have faith that your intent 
will kind of create results. And this sounds extremely weird. As someone who likes to base things in facts and science and rationality, I can't give you any backup for this, but I recommend you try it because it's worked for me. Wake up and think to yourself, I am going to set the intent that I am going to grow and I'm going to come into opportunities and I'm going to get out there and just stir the pot, stir the beaker, see what comes out of it. Take every meeting, take every phone call, talk to every single person you can, get out there and start creating action. And then opportunities and prospects and business will start to fall in your lap from places that you didn't even stir them up. So it doesn't matter what stage you're in, I highly recommend you set the intention, you do everything you can to grow and you'll be blown away with where business comes from. So anyways, guys, I hope this gave you some encouragement or inspiration to go out and build a business where you can become free and do something you really love to do and help people in the process. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.